And this is when the party starts. Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from the Old Bird Farm and it is a big day out on the farm today. So I'm here with my new best friend Woody uh, and he is a beekeeper. We're getting bees out here on the Old Bird Farm, but you're a lot more than just a beekeeper. You have a whole bee business. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We have a bee business. It's uh, obviously it's Honey I'm Home. Uh, we specialize in urban apiaries and uh, urban beekeeping. We let everybody know that you can actually have bees inside the city. I don't care if you're on a quarter acre lot, 16 acre lot, you're in the city or you're in the country, you can always have bees anywhere. Matter of fact, most state laws actually provide protection for people that want to have uh, pollinators. So a lot of these times it actually trumps some of your HOAs and stuff like that, actually having bees on your property because you are helping the environment by um, having pollinators. So here we do a little something a little bit different. We actually take most of our bees and they come from cutouts and removals and swarms. We don't buy a lot of bee packages. We don't farm a lot of queens. Most of our stock comes from uh, removals out of city urban environments. So we take bees that normally be sprayed and killed um, by pest control companies. And we actually take them, remove them, rehabilitate them and put them in boxes. And then we bring them out to beautiful places like this right here. So we're really looking forward to working with y'all. Awesome. And I see you've got some, some socials that I'll leave the links down in Absolutely. the uh, comments. You also have a YouTube channel too, so. We do, um, it's uh, Honey I'm Home, I think it is. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on it, but yeah. Honey I'm Home, uh, we need to start that one back up. We do have a Honey I'm Home Facebook page, and we also have a uh, Honey I'm Home Instagram. Uh, so you can check us out there. Hopefully we'll get that back up and pay a little more attention now, so. Definitely, definitely. I'll put all the links down in the comments awesome. so everyone can check it out. So what are we gonna be doing? So today what we're gonna do is we have a little unique feature today. We actually have um, a swarm uh, a removal we did yesterday or last night. And this is our, one of our bee vacuums. It's a specialized vacuum system that we use to take the bees out safely and not harm them. You will find some down here that are um, not necessarily dead but are uh, uh, honey coated or just uh, didn't make it. But these will be the main ones that clump at the top. This is a specialized system we built um, this is actually one of my friends, uh, George B. Removal Company. Great guys. They built, built this one. We have the ones like, then we have the ones like this that we built. And see, live swarms. So basically, it's a mop bucket. And we modify them with baffles to slow down the suction so we don't kill the bees as they go in there. So we actually put some baffles on there and uh, slow down the suction rate. And then we use pull hoses, stuff like that, interline. And um, that's how we do the bee removals. And we put them in these. So once we do this, we go through a couple different things. So this is a nucleus. So once, once we have them in a trap like this over here, we take them back to our apiaries and we introduce them into a nucleus like this. And what we do is we put them in there on drawn comb frame from their hive and we drop them in there and we look at their genetics and we look at their um, behavior, make sure they're not too aggressive. We like to run a lot of Italians, they're a very calm bee. Um, we go in there and we wait a week or two, we watch them, make sure we do have a laying queen, make sure they're happy, they're not too aggressive. If they're aggressive, we can requeen them, there's things we can do to change that, that behavior in there. So once we take them from a removal out of a house or a structure, we put them in here, we watch them for a week or two, we get them built up, and we'll go through this in a little bit. We get, them laying, get her laying good, make sure everybody's happy in there, everybody's healthy, and then we sell the nooks, or um, we take them out to our apiaries and we run them and produce honey and give them a better life than in the house. So this setup right here requires a secondary landing strip for them. That's the way they're designed, I really don't care for them. So. It'll work good for what we're doing on the next one. So again, we have bottom board, lip coming out. And if you see um, sugar ants coming up in here, and they're getting all this, don't worry about it. Um, if you have a very strong calling, like, oh, how do I get rid of sugar ants? How do I get sugar ants? Sugar ants are their friends. They'll actually go in there and clean out all the dirty stuff. They'll help them. So you have undertaker bees. They'll actually pull the debris out, and they'll pull dead bees out. They keep a super clean colony in there. So if you see sugar ants, it's like, how do I get rid of ants? How do I get rid of ants? We don't worry about it. I love ants. I love to see ants. If you have a strong colony, they're not going to drive the bees off. If you have a weak colony that needs a little bit of help, matter of fact, you can see there's some sugar ants right there. 
I love them. Doesn't bother me a bit. They're helping clean house. That's all they're doing. In a good, strong colony, they'll never leave. You see a lot of times people are like, oh, I lost my, I lost my hive to ants. You never lose it, lose them to ants. So, if we see a little bit of that on there, like I said, this one, pre-drawn uh, comb, looks a little rough. But it's all been frozen, and it's cleaned out all the material in there, but I'm gonna actually use, let me use the ones out of that box. All right, so this is a 10 frame box. So in normal standard boxes, you have a 10 frame or an eight frame. We always run 10s here. This is called a brew chamber or the super or the deep. So the reason we run a deep box here is this is where they're going to raise babies at. And we have options to run two deeps or run single deeps. For this application, we're going to do honey production. We're going to run a single deep. Deep is a deep frame versus a shallow frame. So a shallow frame is going to be about half that. And the reason why we run a shallow frame above this box, which anything above this box is called a super, superfluous, above, that's all it means. So the reason we run a shallow box, a smaller, thinner box above this one, is because if I have this right here, it's a wax foundation. If I have one of these right here and it's full of honey, it weighs almost nothing now. When I feel that, when they feel that full of honey, it's gonna weigh about four to six pounds. If I have 10 of these in there and it weighs six pounds a piece, that's 60 pounds that box weighs. If you're picking those up and moving them all the time, it's a beast moving 60 pound boxes. We go to shallow boxes, our frame's only about this wide, and they hold about 20 to 30 pounds of honey, which makes about 20 to 30 pound boxes a lot easier to work with. So that's the only reason. Certain times we'll run mediums, deeps, all. If we have mechanical effort lifting devices, we can run those. But for backyard beekeeping, this is a way to do it. it makes a little less burden on there. All right, so this is our nuke here. These ladies have been about three weeks out from their, um, when we remove them from a structure. And little bee etiquette, just be nice and quiet. They're a little angry, it's been windy and rainy, and there's the wind. We always check the top, make sure the queen is not in there, not in there. So these are about a week out, uh, about three weeks out, I'm sorry. So we've already established, I've already looked at these, I've already established. Um, we have five frames. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have different age groups and stuff like that. So we're gonna go right here. We're just gonna start going through these real quick and we're gonna start putting them. The very important thing when we're doing this is we want these to go in the exact same order as they come out of this box. So as they come out of this box, we have the entrance here, entrance here. We're gonna come in, we're gonna pull and we're gonna look. We see drawn comb like this. We'll come back and later and clean this up. But this is actually them drawing off the comb. We go in here and clean this up as we go. We do hive inspections and we look for hive beetle. There's a hive beetle right there. It's a bad guy. We'll be putting traps in there for those. Hive beetles were introduced in the eighties. They came over from Asia and have really decimated the um, honeybee population. That's why we have a lot of the problems we have now. But as you see, I went through there and this is gonna go back in this box exactly the same order it came out of that box so one we're gonna go in here and you can really tell sometimes by their volume you can actually hear it go up and down the volume about how happy they are when they're happy or mad you can actually hear so this is a beautiful this is actually oh ladies so this is actually really pretty this is actually cat brood so right here these are all about to hatch matter of fact if you look real close, you'll probably see a couple of them trying to pop out and start to hatch. But these right here, so once they hatch out like this, here's the queen, here's the queen right there. You got the money shot today. Rarely find her, that's the queen. So we'll put her real gently in here. We're gonna put this frame in there. We want her to stay right there. But that's the queen, that's the lady, that's what we want to see today. Backside again. And if you're looking real close, if you look in here real close, so this is nectar. All that is nectar, that'll be capped off and turned into honey. If you see that right there, that is actually pollen. So a lot of people have a misconception that actually bees eat honey. They do not eat honey. They actually mix the pollen, they mix the nectar or honey, and they make a bee bread and actually eat a bee bread. Only the queen will eat the honey. So you see how they're storing it right above? They're very efficient storing it right above the brood so they can go real fast and they can feed the brood very quickly. 
if you look in there this one's about seven days old there's about four to five days old and if we'll look we'll find some that have this like a little piece of tic tac in the bottom of it let's see if i can show you one of those but we know the queen now we know we have a queen there right and we go nice and slow put that in there just like that they are happy we'll go right this one put this one over it's gonna be they're drawing off this one again so we'll go back in there on the next inspection we're gonna go ahead and just clean all that off and space is bad bees love to be tight they love full sun and they love to be tight if you're nice and calm and you work in the bees the more calm you are the more calm they're gonna be and these girls have been pinned up for a while now so they're actually a little agitated perfect example of combining resources so they're packing the pollen in here they're packed in the nectar and he nectar in here once they've got that nectar to a right uh, humidity content they actually just like a barometer just like you do uh, moonshine so once they get the pH level and the humidity level right in that honey they'll cap that off then we know it's a right exact pH and it'll last forever well, same thing again there beautiful that's a good frame that's a good frame of brood so we got a beautiful starter out here. Hey, look at that. Stacking. Stacking that nectar. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have ten frames in there. Close to right there. Look at that. It's a good one. So, if you look real closely, that's actually a cadaver bee. She's actually going and getting that dead bee and actually pulling that dead bee out of there. So there's like we put the lid on, we're really careful, ladies. So we do a little slide and bump move, give them a little like that. They'll actually roll out of the way. So we give them a little, little time to move. You can actually fill it right there. It's nailing me right under the eye right now. You hit? Yeah, right under the eye. Oh, yeah, I can't get you. That's aggressive. Oh, did she get you? Oh, yeah, that was. That was going to be good. Oh, yeah, that was good. Good trooper, dude. You know what it is? I can't move the other Yeah, I see they're hitting me there. I can't move the other one. I can't move your butt. All right, so we're back for round two of bees. I've, I survived. I'm not allergic to bees. Officially so, not allergic yeah. to bees. No anaphylactic shock today. That's right. Good deal. Uh, so what are we doing now? So, All right, so now we're going to go. So you saw how we did this box here, and that was a nucleus that we took off of one of our cutouts. And we took these ladies here, and you see it up there at the top. So we took these ladies here. We put them in a, nuke, a nucleus, five frames, with comb and everything there. We put them there, we left them for two to three weeks, uh, made sure that we have a laying queen, which we saw the queen in there, make sure that she's laying, make sure they have produce. They have uh, honey and nectar on all the frames and they're laying. Once we do that, then we know they're ready. So the precursor of that is we'll take these ladies, we'll put them in here and we'll watch it for a couple weeks. We'll actually come back in about three to five days. Look, make sure we have a queen. If not, we'll introduce a queen. Um, if there is a queen, and I'm pretty sure there is a queen in there, we'll know she's in there. And uh, then we'll have these ready for two, three weeks. We'll be ready to start another box like that. And we'll just keep going and going. So right now, what's fixing to happen is really windy day in Georgia. So we're going to dump these bees into this box. And all holy hell is going to break loose. It's going to be a madhouse. It's fixing to go bees everywhere. It's going to be chaotic. But they're going to know there's comb in there. This is kind of where they want to be. It's a safe spot. They lost their home last night in a beautiful house in Columbus, Georgia. So they're gonna be a little wound tight, but uh, they'll calm down after a few minutes, 30 minutes or so, and 
they'll establish this as home and it's nice and smells just like an old hive in there. So that's what fixed to happen. So here we go. So that means for me, I'm going to put the camera on the tripod yeah. and uh, stand somewhere else. Yeah. We're going to try to leave, limit his uh, sting count to about four today. I'm up to, I can get about 30 before I start to go. I need to probably put some protection on. Not bragging, wear protection. I'm just dumb or very not intelligent, but this is not cool to not wear, wear gear. Wear your gear, wear your protective gear. This is not, we're being cool and we can do it without gear. That's not what we're doing here. If you feel more comfortable, wear the gear to you get comfortable doing it. I just do it so much. Sometimes it's a little more cumbersome to me, put the gear on and just do it like that. So wear your gear, be protective, and here we go. And I am wearing my protective gear. Let me put my protective gear on. The reason we keep that bill off there is because keep the bill on, they flop underneath the bill and then they want to take your forehead. So protective gear right there. We have a lot of beautiful bees. And a lot of people are concerned when I dump this, I'm actually dumping a lot of dead bees into this box. They're like that's not really good. But the thing is you have undertaker bees and they'll actually keep a really clean hive. So what they'll do is they'll actually, once they get established here and they like it, they'll actually start flying and taking the dead bees out of here. So it kind of looks a little crazy at first that we're dumping a lot of dead bees, a lot of debris, but they'll take care of, they keep a clean house. Take that right there. This is our swarm removal trap. This actually we use, this is the vacuum system we use. And this is one of our cages out of the vacuum system. Right there. I'm gonna take it like that. Knock it down a little bit. And this is when the party starts. And they are really, really not happy right now. All they want to do is jump out and sting everything to stop them from being at home. I'm going to take that plug right there. We'll roll it over. And then... Oh. And again, as you see, it got kind of wild there, didn't it? So all these dead bees on top like this right here, a lot of these aren't dead. They're just coated. So they'll go through there and actually clean each other off. And they'll actually, any of the dead bees that are there, they'll actually start picking those up and taking them off. So we'll do now. And these will start flying off. Take that right there. And then you'll see, it looks like we're squishing them. But we're actually not squishing them. They'll actually roll out of the way. And there's that beautiful banana smell. So we'll leave that half on for a minute. And we'll let them acclimate. Let them not try to eat my face off. I love your face. Even though they're clustered out here, a little confused, but they're now they're starting to still in there. If that cluster was up underneath there, and I grab that, and that queen was in there, it's going to start pushing them up into, or making them want. Now they're look, they're crawling in that box. Up my hands. How much calmer they've gotten? Like, okay, queen's safe. She's in here. She's doing her thing. But we just want to make sure I saw that cluster down here. I just want to make sure that queen 
didn't fall out of the box. As I cook some more of them in there, the more of them want to go. Okay, that's all our buddies are going. Hey, Queen must be up here. So it makes them want to start migrating. So they'll actually start crawling back up inside that box. There's your stinger right there. We're talking about the stinger has a gland on it. That gland right there will keep pumping for up to five minutes. It'll sit there and pump venom. So when you take that, you can actually see it pumping. What you want to do is you want to scrape that off. You don't want to squeeze it. You want to scrape it off. And make sure you get all the... Look at that. Now there's something going there. And they really don't want to sting you. That's not their, their goal is not to sting you. What they want to do is they want to be happy. Mm -hmm. We're just helping little ladies just remember where to go. Mm -hmm. Calm and steady, nice, good energy, good woosaw. Mm -hmm. And the reason I got stung on my arm right there, if you saw that, I actually pushed my arm. I think she squished on my arm. She did not want to sting me. Right now, they don't have a home. They don't have a lot of they do a little bit of a home. Look at that. Look at them crawling. Look at that. Same thing we do cut out stuff, just nice and soft. She's her hands. You're not a threat. And all these ones that are flying right now. That's the last seven to 10 days of life. Foragers and the ones that go out and forage are also the ones that protect the hive. That's the only last seven days of life they do that. The first 23 days of their life are tending the hive, moving produce around in the hive. So they're only the last seven days they're attackers that'll sting you or they're out foraging. So any of your forager bees that you're out seeing in the wild, they only have seven days left to live. 27 days average on a worker bee, um, average winter time they last longer uh, certain conditions they last less um, queen three years max usually two to three years you want to do it hmm? you want to do it huh he said he's not scared of bees he's gonna do it not even slightly uh, he said not even slightly not even a mm -mm. I'm gonna go with no I'm gonna tell you what I'm not gonna do today Tell you what, I'll do that next time. Deal. Next time. I'll hold you that. I'll, absolutely. No, I'm not gonna hold you that. No, I'll do it next time. I want to do it next time. Oh, and I see why they were clustered on this side actually is because we had a little gap on that side. We're actually sliding through a little bit. We're gonna leave that crack there and we're gonna slide this one over. Like I said, these dead ones up here, you see a lot of those are like, that's a little, very concerning. But it's actually not, they'll actually take all these dead ones that I can and don't forget, a dead bee will sting you just as good as a live bee. Really? Oh, absolutely. And there's a drone. So that's a good example of a drone bee. That's a male. That's a drone. He will not sting you, can't sting you. He's got a shorter, fatter butt. A lot of people mistake him for a queen. That's actually a drone. And drones cannot sting. They do not do not have a stinger. That's a drone bee right there. Shorter, fatter versus a shorter, thinner variety. But yeah, if you step on a bee or anything happens, they will absolutely, a dead bee, you get stung more by dead bees than do live bees, I promise you. And they are super hygienic. So they do not want ants in there. They don't want roaches. They do not want anything. That's actually insulation within the house when we do the removal. That's actually the spray foam insulation. So they want a super clean house. They don't want roaches. They don't want ants. They don't want anything. This thing is like a, the most sterile, like a like a surgical room. They keep it sterile in here. Honey does not attract bacteria. You can't look at her. Uh -huh. Where she uh -huh. went. That's when she lost her. She went to sting me. And that's her. Unfortunately, that's her guts coming out there. And then she's done. But that's actually and that's that her pumping the venom there. But that's actually unfortunately. But that's. 
but they, they keep it super super sterile. I mean, if, if, seeing over in Europe and stuff, they're actually having uh, lots of studies where they're actually breathing bee air. They're actually taking hives like this and putting uh, chambers in there. And you actually breathe the honey, the air out of there. All kind of medicinal benefits. And we did a little bump again. But they'll go in there and clean all those dead bees out. And after a while, you'll actually go to the front and you'll actually see one carrying another bee. They're carrying the dead out. And they'll take the dead out and get them away from the hive, way away from the hive. They want it super clean. They do not want mice. They don't want roaches, rats. We go in these houses and stuff like that. You have roaches and rats and everything through the entire house. You go over there where the bee infestation is at and there is not even an ant in there. They keep it that sterile because they do not want any kind of predators. They do not want any kind of competition. They don't want any kind of stuff in there. Um, honey is a natural antimicrobial. Germs will not grow on honey. So everybody's like germophobic, like silver. Silver, you cannot get uh, silver. Uh, germs don't grow on silver. Same thing with honey. You get, so me and you have a spoonful of honey together. You can lay germ, you can lay honey out and put any kind of bacteria on it. It will not grow. Like a petri, it will not grow. So they keep that super sterile, super clean there. So these ladies right here, we can give them three to five, seven days. Let them kind of get back at home, get acclimated there. Once we get those, we're gonna check on them. These ladies right here, make this home. There's babies in there, the queen is in there. We saw the queen during the video. They're just a little figuring out what's going on right now. But you can see they're going, they're gonna run. And they'll actually start running the front now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this down. I just wanna make sure she didn't come out the front there. That's why I went. <laughs> that up and the rest of them they were looking for the entrance we had over here but they'll go around to the front and they'll actually find the way in so any of the ones that crawl like that they are not foragers yet they are actually still doing hive maintenance so they're in their first 14 days of life you can see they're really docile all right well so we've got two hives set up out there, which is awesome. Uh, it took some stings, felt, feels good. No was great. flash shock, shock, we already covered that one. But so Woody and I are gonna be working together some more in the future. Um, on, we're gonna be putting some more hives. So I'll have two hives that are old bird farm hives out here and then he'll have some hives as well. And so he does, uh, you do classes Absolutely. on bees. So we may actually be hosting some classes on beekeeping out here and just really exciting stuff as we uh, go forward. Absolutely, so, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, me too. Yeah, so we established um, established a couple of hives out here today. Um, nothing big. We like to start small. A lot of people, they, they want to start with a lot of hives first and you don't realize how rapidly an apiary actually evolves. So two boxes become four, four, eight, eight, 16, 16, 32. It expands really rapidly. So what we're doing here is we're gonna start small and we're gonna establish a really good apiary and a good working knowledge of how bees go. And we're gonna do some lessons out here and uh, we're gonna bring some honeybees in here and uh, help pollinate the uh, gardens that you're establishing. It's looking beautiful out here. It's been a couple weeks since I've been out here. I can't believe how much it's already been done out here. It's looking great. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna work together and it's gonna be a good time. And we're gonna teach people about bees and about um, apiculture and, and apiary and bees and have a good time and be out here on the farm, the fresh air and God's sun and looking forward to it, man. We have a blast. I'm, I'm excited. Me too, all right. me too. And Let's I'll leave all the links for all of your stuff down in the comments so Absolutely. you guys can check that out. And uh, Honey, I'm home, Casa del Sol. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all those things. He'll take care of it. Y'all keep following him. He's got good things going out here. It's a blessing. This is, this is, this is God's work right here.